Please rule that off if you haven't already make this heading. We're talking about the square roots of complex numbers today. Now the way that we should think about this comes back to our understanding of square roots in the first place. Okay, now this is not a trick question, I promise. What is this equal to? This is 5. This is 5. And it is unambiguously 5. However, I just wonder how, you know, before you were introduced to this symbol, right, and the idea of a square root, I wonder what words you would use. And I'm actually going to give you a moment to pause and turn to the person next to you and suggest this. We know what the answer is, but what does it mean? What is a square root? How would you articulate it in words before you had symbols to explain what was going on? This is actually really important for when we talk to, about complex number square roots. Can I give you 30 seconds to turn to the person beside you and give me a verbal definition of what a square root is? 30 seconds, go. All right, I asked some of you as you were waiting, because you had your discussion fairly rapidly, which was fine with me, to, to jot down what your verbal definition was. And um, please don't take shortcuts around that. If you haven't written it down, write it now as I'm speaking what your definition for this was. Is anyone brave enough to share their definition? The square of a number is what? Varen, nice and loud. I said it in, in this context. Yeah. yeah. What number when multiplied by itself equals 25? What number when multiplied by itself gives 25? Whatever's underneath the square root or the radical sign is the name. Hands up if you had a very similar definition to Varen's. Hands up. Yep, okay, thank you. Hands down. Did anyone have a radically different, radically, did anyone have a really different definition to that? Well, that was basically it. Yeah? June, have you got, you know, Aaron, yeah? <laughs> Here's my friend, under the bus. Do, you, do either of you want to suggest a different definition? <laughs> That's how. Another divided by itself. <laughs> can, I, can I just point out, by the way, this, this moment where we're kind of thinking about something that we feel like we know, but trying to think about how do we articulate it, this is exactly what the work of a mathematician looks like. To be able to take something like, like we were talking before about this guy, right? This is where this whole journey began. And our willingness to take this weird object and think about a really careful definition for us has just opened up a world to us, okay? In the absence of more input from here, I'm going to go with Vren's idea. The number that when you multiply by itself gives you 25. I like that definition. There's just a big problem with it. Would anyone like, and it's a problem we all know, right? What's the problem with that definition? Say it again. Yeah, go for it. We are not taking into consideration the positive and the need, because we, if we take Varen's suggestion, which was a good one, and so, it was so good that the vast majority of you agreed, doesn't this number also fit that definition? It does, right? And so in fact, even though we've never told you about this, you know how we were talking about the principal argument, right? What you have been working with, what you've been calling the square root, actually is not the square root. It has been, all this time, called the principal square root. We just never told you about it because you never knew there was anything else, right? We just said, hey, this thing, forget about it, right? Forget about it. Because where did we first meet the square roots of any numbers? What, what topic were we in when we first needed to actually use these things? It was, think, so I heard someone say quadratic, I heard trig, before that, before thirds, year seven and eight. Think, end of year seven, beginning of year eight. It was, say it again, Jack. Pythagoras. Pythagoras, it was right angled triangles. Right? Ah, uh, now, get this. Anger, can you say that again, just a bit louder? It couldn't have been negative anyway. It couldn't have been negative because it's a length. It's a length. I'm measuring something. It's going to be positive. So we just said, forget about it, right? However, it really is just saying one of them is more useful to us than the other one, right? And it's inconvenient to think about it, so we just forgot about it for a little while. But, when we come into this world of complex numbers, right, there no longer is an argument like this. There no longer is an argument to say, oh, clearly one is better than the other, which is why in your title you wrote square roots plural. So what we're going to do is have a look at a number, a complex number, and think about how would we even go about arriving at the answers to this question. Answers plural, that's really important. Okay. Now, like I said, I need a bit more space. Um, we're going to go with 
Varen's definition was so good you all agree with it, I think it's a really good start. We're trying to think of a number, numbers, that when you multiply it by themselves, by, yeah, by themselves, you're going to arrive there. Does that make sense? There's some number. Let's give a name, shall we? Um, did I call this? No, I didn't call anything. Um, let some complex number, like say z, because we're so original, right? Let z, when you square it, so that's z squared, let it equal that. That's what we want. Whatever that z is, it should work, right? So what have, what have I got? Minus 2 plus 2 root 3 i. OK. And this is a really cool moment because we have spent the better part of a month and a bit developing for you multiple ways of thinking about this. I said z, but I didn't tell you what form z was in. And you have three options, right? Would anyone like to suggest what might be the most natural form to start in for this question as posed? What do you think, Yi? Um, exponential. exponential form. I really love, if you were thinking of exponential form, right? I think there's a really good argument to be made for that. Let's have a think about this. We're raising something to an exponent. We've seen the whole point of exponential form is you're naturally talking this language, right? Now we are going to go there. I'm going to suggest though, there's another piece of evidence in the question that might suggest another form might be equally useful. Any takers? I mean, you've only got two other options now. <laughs> it's 50-50, come on. Who's a betting person, right? Now mod arg form is another form that when you think about it, right? We introduce mod arg form to think about the angle of where things are going, right? Think about the starter questions that you did today, okay? You squared a number, remember that? And you think about where it is based on its margins and its argument. However, we'll point out, mod arg form is basically exponential form but written in long form, right? It's a longer way to write exponential form. My suggestion for why maybe rectangular form might be handy here is, well, just have a look at this number. This is written in rectangular form, does that make sense? Yeah. Real, imaginary, okay? Now, fingers crossed, we will get to both today, but let's consider it in rectangular form first. So make a little subheading, which is rectangular form. If z is a complex number, I can write it in rectangular form like so. I can say let z equal and because I don't know what its real or imaginary part are, oh, I have to introduce some letters, right? What letters would you like? A plus IB. A plus IB will do it for me. OK, so it's a classic. I can appreciate the classics. So if that's what it is, well, I'm supposed to square this thing, right? So I'm going to say, therefore, A plus IB all squared equals whatever number I'm supposed to arrive at, right? Negative 2 plus 2 root 3 i. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to pull out an old favorite, a tool we've been using over and over again, which is to say that right hand side, it's got a real and imaginary part. If we are really saying that these things are equal, then the real and imaginary part from here should be the same. Do you agree? Yes. So I'm going to hit pause for a moment because I think you could take over from here for a big portion of this. I want you to see how far you can get Expanding this thing out, finding the real and imaginary parts, and then making a comparison. See how far you can get. You might hit some hurdles. That's OK. Press on them and see if you can make some progress. And we'll come back together in a few minutes. Off you go. All right, I see several of you have made progress, which is excellent. And I love that the wheels are turning. Because you're like, oh, I get what's going on now, right? What have I done? I have just expanded here. Right? Um, just expanded everything out. I've noticed an i squared, so I have done a uh, substitution there for negative 1. And notice that, oh, those are the real parts. a squared minus b squared. And then what you get left with is the imaginary part separated out. And so I make my comparison. Here they are. Okay? And so what you've created is a pair of simultaneous equations. We're quite good at dealing with these, right? You just have to be a little bit cautious.